Live now to London, where Premier Doug Ford is speaking. You know, we've done some great things here in London over the last little while, and along with uh, the mayor's Jean-Francois from the Automotive Industries Association of Canada, and Flavia Volpe from the Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association, and all the representatives from our auto industry and post-secondary institutional joining us today. Before I get started, I wanted to give a, a big shout out to Flavio. Flavio has played such a critical role in helping Ontario become a world leader in the electric vehicle revolution. He's helped, he's helped bring numerous companies here at all levels of government uh, in cooperation, no matter if it's labour partners, industry leaders, Indigenous communities, to help secure game-changing investments into the auto sector. He continues to be a critical part of discussions as we work to secure all of the progress, building our electric vehicle and battery supply chain from start to finish. Thank you, Flavio, for doing so much for our province and our country. Thank you. I also want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to Mel, Chris and Norm and the entire team at Transform Automotive for us hosting us today. And I'll tell you folks, nothing happens at any of these plants I visit without the frontline people working their backs off, making the parts, part of the supply chain that goes into the uh, auto manufacturers plants. And so I just want to thank each and every one of you. And that's what I love. I love the frontline workers. As Premier. As Premier, nothing brings me more joy than walking the floor of auto plants. That's what I've done my whole, my whole life in our, in our company and seeing the pride on the faces of workers, the pride that comes from a hard, hard day's work, the pride that comes from making things happen and making uh, parts right here in Ontario. Again, I want to thank all of you. Working with workers, great companies like Transform and industry partners like APMA and AIA Canada, we're putting Ontario's auto sector back on the map. We're building an electric vehicle supply chain, connecting critical minerals in Northern Ontario and clean steel makers in Hamilton and Sault Ste. Marie to automakers and battery and auto part manufacturers right across this province. Because the future is electric and we're leading the charge. Over the past two and a half years, we've attracted over $25 billion in the auto and EV battery investment, including, most recently, Volkswagen's $7 billion investment to build its first overseas EV battery manufacturing facility here in St. Thomas. These are game-changing investments, are creating new jobs, better jobs, better paychecks across the auto supply chain, and driving economic growth. You know, folks, when we, when we compete, our number one selling feature are the talent of the people, the talent like folks like yourself, along with our colleges and universities. That is critical. That's our number one selling feature when we're selling Ontario to the world. But as we continue to attract investments, the biggest concern I hear from business owners across all sectors, right across every part of our province, is not being able to find enough workers. The numbers speak for themselves. These are staggering numbers. When we took office... Okay, we've been listening in live to Premier Doug Ford, who is speaking uh, with alongside the Labour Minister. Premier Doug Ford is making an announcement and taking questions from the media. Let's listen in. Um, but obviously the last time you were here, your uh, minister, Mr. Fidelli, mentioned there would be substantial funding for infrastructure in regards to helping out those that are in this plant and others get to and from work, uh, not to mention the substantial growth that you speak of, housing, hospitals and such. Um, how committed are you to southwestern Ontario in terms of uh, whatever it takes funding to give us what the GTA has in uh, transit, roads and such? For example, Highbury, which this plant connects to, to the Volkswagen plant, yep. is not a twin highway. It's a dual lane road that has yep. multiple accidents and fatalities. Are you ready to do whatever it takes to build transportation specifically here in London and southwestern Ontario? Well, first of all, thank, thanks so much for that question. Uh, right off the hop, talk about southwestern Ontario. When we saw government after government fail about twinning Highway 3, we're twinning Highway 3. 
We're going to make sure that we put the infrastructure in to support this community on top of Volkswagen uh, in St. Thomas down the road. That's all part of the, the uh, program. When we come into a town, uh, a company, the province, the municipality, we make sure we bring in the proper energy, the electricity that is needed, not just for that facility, but for homes and residential uh, units right across this area. On top of that, on uh, all the part manufacturers that are going to open up here as well. And we're going to make sure that we have the infrastructure, no matter if it's the, the schools or the hospitals or the fire department that we're putting in as well, and making sure we twin the roads, because you can't have a, a massive uh, auto part manufacturer like Transform or a company like Volkswagen and not have proper roads. So we're committed to building the roads, and that was part of the deal, by the way, with Volkswagen. But thanks for that question. All right, as a follow-up, Premier, I'd ask you uh, for an update from my colleagues at CTV Windsor. Where are things standing with the Stellantis uh, situation uh, as it stands this morning? I'm sure you've been briefed recently. Where do we stand? Well, we're waiting for the federal government to uh, finish off the deal. As you know, we put in our fair share. Now we're stepping up again to put more money because it's all about the people. It's all about making sure they have the jobs down in uh, Windsor region and right across southwestern Ontario. Let me tell you, you were asking about southwestern Ontario. Very few parts of this province have shown more, we've shown more love to than uh, southwestern Ontario. And you're talking Windsor specifically, no matter if it's a new hospital or the two new schools or the bridge that we're building or the roads that we're building or the off ramps that we're, we're building. And of course, the investment with, uh, with uh, Volkswagen that people in this region will be working at Volkswagen. There's going to be 30,000 spin off jobs. When I went to Volkswagen before, you could literally shoot a cannon down the streets of St. Thomas and not hit anyone. They need economic development, they need growth. So again, there's no region in this province that's had more investment from this province, uh, from, from our government than the southwestern region. And it has a lot to do with the, uh, the auto companies. Good morning, Premier Ford. Morning. Ontario uh, has committed more money to make this Delantis deal happen, is pushing the feds for that as well. You yourself have mentioned there'll be lots of spin-off jobs and other companies coming to the area. Does this payout, does this capitulating to Stellantis, putting up more money than you'd originally offered, send a really bad precedent to these other companies looking to locate here for the Volkswagen deal? No, it doesn't at all. It creates economic development. Again, you know, you've been down to Windsor before if you want to talk about Stellantis. Uh, that town before we took office was hurting. It's uh, no different than St. Thomas. You could shoot a cannon down the streets of Windsor and not hit anyone. Uh, people in St. Thomas remember when they had 5,000 jobs walk, walk away from St. Thomas. And what were those 5,000 people doing? They were struggling. They weren't paying their mortgage. We're bringing economic growth, unprecedented economic growth to Ontario. It's the fastest growing region in North America, bar none. And uh, we're going to continue attracting more companies here. Um, your government has been um, pretty supportive of consumption and treatment sites in Ontario, including one here in London. Uh, you know, the Conservative Party, though, as of late, has really taken aim at harm reduction and safe supply in, uh, in Canada. I just wanted to know, is the position of the CPC incorrect? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what they need. They need rehab centres, and we're there to support them. We need to build more beds until the heads can go into the beds and get themselves better. You know, I, I understand that situation. Um, but you need to support these people, get them back on their feet, get them a good paying job and get their life moving forward. It's a real challenge and I'll just have to tell you, the City of London received about 63% increase in funding, uh, up from $13.3 million to $21.88 million for, for homeless and then eliminated the development charges on not-for-profit housing. That's why I'm always preaching that the cities need to take not-for-profit housing, uh, the, the DCs, and not charge them because that makes it affordable for someone that's struggling to have a home and a roof over their heads. Okay, this will be the last question. Good morning, Premier. Hi. Queen's Park CBC Bureau. Hi. What's your reaction to potentially facing Bonnie Crombie in the next election? Well, my, my first reaction is, what took you so long? She's been campaigning for five years. My second reaction is, bring it on. That, that's simple as that. You can't be running for mayor or being mayor and running 
for a leader. Like, you know, you can't put your butt on both sides of the fence. You know, what, what's happening, we're making the largest change in the history of Mississauga and Peel. And this is all about Bonnie Crombie's political, uh, you know, agenda. It's not about the people of Mississauga. I'm going to take care of the people of Mississauga, and Bonnie's going to be running around the province not worrying about the people of Mississauga. In my opinion, it's a real slap in the face to the, to the residents there. I'll always be there working for the folks there, and uh, rather than Bonnie running around, let's, let's get on with the show, run for leader, and let's make this thing happen. Because people do not want to go back to the liberal era of losing 300,000 jobs, not building homes, and by the way, Mississauga with a population of 800,000 people, they only built 2,100 homes. That's unacceptable because there's a log jam at Mississauga. I think the best thing to do, she runs against me and we get a, a new mayor in Mississauga. That's my opinion. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.